Well, my name is Antonio Aversano, and I'm currently living in um, Greenfield, Massachusetts, beautiful place to be. And um, hmm, I'm grateful to be able to share about my life and my life experience. Um, and I guess specifically how it pertains to um, being affected by the loss of my dad uh, in 9-11, on 9-11. It's interesting how we hold 9-11. It's both an event, like in this event of 9-11, but it's a date, September 11th, 2001. Uh, my dad, uh, Louis F. Aversano, Jr., worked at a company called Aon Corporation. And um, he went to work like everyone else that day and didn't make it home like thousands of other people that day. Um, part of what had my dad be there past that, I, I hold in my consciousness that there's this point that I don't I think it's undefinable, but this point of no return, where if you didn't get out, if you didn't leave the building by a certain point, um, you didn't make it. I don't think anybody knows that moment, but I, I feel there is this like fine line of make it, not make it. And my dad, because of the shining being that, um, he is still um, and very outgoing, very radiant person, very personable, friendly, um, just was knew everyone, connected with many people. He was the fire marshal for his floor of, uh, at the World Trade Center, which the fire department had designated to everyone. And in that building, in the event there was an emergency, um, and that fire marshal was responsible for getting everyone out of their particular floor, bef and then check in with the fire department when they got down to the lobby. That would help the fire department take account of, of all the floors. Because of his call to service in that way, of course he had to then be the last person off of that floor. And having that role on that day was a life or death kind of role. It meant that he had to be the last one off, make sure everyone was out of the building. Um, and because of that, he didn't make it out. Um, mm. I think I'm gonna share now a little bit of, of uh, the relationship with my dad um, that kind of leads to how I was impacted by his loss and kind of how that's led to how I've coped with it and um, where I am today. Um, as I think a lot of people could share a similar story, uh, there was a time in my life where in my 20s where I was having some life challenges. It's kind of off of my own questioning. Um, you know, having some struggles financially, personally, existentially. What am I doing? Things weren't working career-wise, relationship-wise, you know, just across the board. And someone like parents become good targets at that point in life. Like, oh, I wasn't raised properly. You know, I just adhered to that story, that idea that it must be my parents' fault. They were the ones who raised me. They must have made a mistake along the way because I'm feeling kind of screwed up right now. And so dad became a target for me and was so for, you know, maybe five years of my, um, in my mid to late 20s. Um, and when I turned 30 years old, uh, I had a friend, you know, see that I was struggling and starting to dig my way out of this rut that I was in in my, my late 20s. And... Uh, encouraged me to do this workshop, kind of personal growth, a place where you could go and be with other people and reflect on your life and the places that you're feeling stuck. And so I feel really grateful that I had a friend who cared about me in that way that would encourage me to do such a thing and um, to 
Uh, and then I feel really grateful that for whatever reason I had the courage or foresight to actually, even though there was fear of taking such a step, because of course my mind made up all kinds of reasons why I shouldn't and, you know, it cost too much money and blah, 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 blah. But I, but I did it anyways, because there was something there that I sensed for myself. So I went, um, I had this amazing experience, and I'm sharing this in this context of talking about my dad in September 11th, because um, the biggest gift I received from that personal growth weekend was looking at the relationship with my father and reaching um, and seeing that a, seeing a lot of the suffering I had was being self-generated and seeing how that played out my relationship with him in that I was actually using um, my dad as a target in a way that I wasn't taking responsibility for my own life. I was blaming him, judging him, and then putting it all out there. And so what emerged for me from that um, experience was kind of seeing that and being like, whoa. <laughs> um, it's like it's something that was out of view, like I didn't see it, I couldn't see it, and all of a sudden it came into view and it's right in front of my face. And I'm looking at it going like, oh my gosh, look at how I've been, look at what I've been doing. And really what was happening is I was taking my power back. Um, in a way it was going from, um, it was claiming what I, I, I kind of play on words with this, it was claiming responsibility. Being able to respond. It's like claiming my power in both my relationship, in my relationships, but in my life. 